right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from the other coast, from Lee Hayward, who is in Charleston, beautiful Charleston, South Carolina. How are you doing, Lee? Hi, John. Thanks so much for having me. Of course, and Lee's a brand consultant and founder of The Prosperous Image, a consulting firm that gives clients an edge in the moments that matters. Uh, you have a superpower in your ability to quickly zero in on fragmented pieces of your brand and then beautifully create a more powerful image that helps you prosper. Author of best-selling books, Strategically Suited, Your Secret Edge to Grow Sales and Get New Clients, and recently published a children's book. Very nice. Mirror Friends, Find the Magic Inside. Uh, and what we're going to talk about today is how you can create a prosperous image that helps you activate your sales and boost your bottom line. So we, let, let's see, let's kind of uh, bottom line this, if you like, for a minute here and sort of say, when you talk about your an, a prosperous image, what does that encompass? So I believe I've had the, I've been very blessed to work in a couple of different industries. And in the beginning of my life, I was working both as a sales rep where my job was to sell in. And then mm -hmm. I also worked as a merchandiser where my job was to push sell through. Right. And so it was in that world where I started realizing that sell in is one part of the business, but sell through is another. And they've got to be aligned and completely authentic. So when I created this branding company that I have, it began with this idea of how you as a leader, as, a, as an entrepreneur, whomever you are, are showing up in a way that helps you prosper. But what I started noticing is that really all the pieces of your marketing have to be aligned with the very authentic core of who you are and what your business is actually doing. And when that happens, this magic happens where like growth starts just plugging along and you eliminate what I call these sort of like hiccup moments mm -hmm. where the customer or the person on the other side is like, oh, do I need this? Is this the right place for me to be? And so that is a prosperous image, an image where you can propel growth simply by being authentic and sort of merchandise in a way that helps you do that. Yeah. And I think uh, I, I think that a lot of people struggle with that today because we're hearing authenticity the whole time. Uh, yeah. uh, and uh, in fact, I, I think it was word of the year or something last year like that. But I think people struggle with. What does it really mean? Because, I mean, you know, I mean, there's people out there who will tell you how to be authentic, which sounds about as, you know, inauthentic as you can get. But uh, <laughs> but how do people how do you how do you start to discover that authenticity yourself or bring it out? I mean, I think the biggest thing that can this is what I always tell my clients, like if it feels like a should and this is such a simplistic way of talking about it, but if it feels like a should, it's not authentic. Mm. And I truly believe in reverse engineering everything from the result that you want. And how do you get the result that you want coming from the place of the essence, the vision, the goal that you, you know, created this thing from? So how do you get there and be able to look back on the trajectory and be like, wow, we really stood in exactly what we stand for in a way that helped us grow? No, I think that's an excellent point, because I think what happens with a lot of businesses is that obviously they grow, they organically and and then their their culture, their image and everything grows organically as well. And it's never there, there's there's a point when you have to sort of look at it and say, you know, well, what is what is the truth here? What is the the line down the middle, if you like, rather than just let it kind of organically spread out and become a kind of muddled image, if you like. Well, and that's one of the biggest problems. And I think what happens so much in all sorts of businesses is that all of these things are created to help us grow, to help us market. And they're created from the place of good intention, mm -hmm. but they're not always created from an aligned place. And then, you know, like a website is a great example. Like you create a website and then all of a sudden, by the time that website is done, the business has already outgrown the website or a book. You know, by the time mm -hmm. you by the time you finish a book, you've already outgrown that. You've got so much more information. And so ensuring that each piece of your marketing is done in a way that is aligned with where you're going and not what you just need right now 
is huge and it sounds so dumb, but that's what happens. And you end up with this muddled, mangled sort of mess of a, of a positioning and image. Yeah, and I feel like that's becoming more prevalent today because of the all the different channels that people feel like they need to to b appear on. You know, whether it's uh, whether it's LinkedIn or whether it's other social media platforms on the web, anywhere. And I think oftentimes they engage kind of different people to do different parts of that, and that's where you suddenly start to get um, slightly different messages or slightly different images being projected. Yes, for sure. And and you almost have to almost be, I mean, sometimes my role is just to be the brand bodyguard. And mm -hmm. so whether you're outsourcing that or you are, you really actually can't outsource it, even though that is my job. My job is actually to hold that person to the vision that I have now heard and believed to be true. And so what does happen is the vision gets outsourced to all of these different people. And that's where the sort of muddled comes from. And so that is the one thing that you do have to sort of own as, you know, obviously that's the job of the CEO, but like ensuring that that is an aligned um, process. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's difficult. It's difficult sometimes because as we said, I mean, I don't think always, and you know, the people, you know, the CEO or whatever is attuned to that part of it. You know, they tend to be focused on other things. And, uh, and, and that whole idea of, as you were just saying, brand stewardship, um, that is something that I think people outside of, of marketing or brand stewards often think, well, oh, that's just, you know, that's just them being them, but it's, uh, it's something that you really have to articulate well with the organization to understand why this matters. For sure. I was recently in a meeting with somebody's brand new CMO and they were talking about the growth that they were getting ready to create and the direction they were going in. And this particular person said, well, we're obviously going to have to sort of lean more mainstream. And I was just listening and I thought, mainstream like this particular business is the opposite of mainstream and so in some versions of growing a company that might have been the solution but for this particular company you would have killed it if you said right. we're gonna go mainstream and so just you know in the onboarding and how everybody sort of takes on that brand stewardship is 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 actually integral to to growth yeah. And then and then the whole um, idea like of, of the image and the brand personality. And because I see a lot of times now is I see people at uh, companies trying to adopt brand personalities that for me are jarring. They don't fit with who they are. They're looking at other people and they're thinking, wow, I need to be a little bit more edgy or a little bit more this or that. And then you're just thinking, but that that just is totally grates against kind of who you are and what you do. And, and so I, I feel like people are often like, looking out and just trying to grab on what they think the latest thing is and it and it doesn't always fit with you i mean sometimes it's good if you're if you're if you're a a kind of a serious business that does serious things it's okay to that to be your brand because that's who you are right well yes because that would be what you stand for yeah. and that would be what the client is coming for i mean you you hear all the times like one of the one of the easiest places to make the most impact in your brand are the things that your customer receives that are like the main boring things, you know, the 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 welcome email, how people are mm -hmm. onboarded, a contract if you're sending it out. And how do you make those things actually be remarkable so that all of a sudden you are not like everybody else and you have this essence that makes them say, oh, all right, I know who this is. Mm -hmm. And then the the obviously the idea of making these things seem, you know, more relatable and more personal. I think that's also, you know, part of it. it's like an onboard or welcome email. You can either send a really rote one that's, you know, you get from everybody else, or as you say, you can put a bit of thought into it and and then you're building on your brand. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and it's everybody's doing like kind of what you said earlier, everybody's doing the same thing and looking at what everybody else is doing and then seeing how to adopt it. And I mean, the real, the real key, which is not a new concept is like, how can you be different? You know? Mm -hmm. And so the only way to be different in a way that works is to go back to our, you know, 
or buzzword, annoying word, whatever we want to say is, but back to the authenticity of who you are. And so everything has to go through that lens. And then every person in your organization has to be able to articulate who you are in a way that is actually correct. I mean, that's one of the biggest challenges is that as it goes down within the organization that it gets muddled. And mm -hmm. so the person who is putting out the email or is creating this process has a muddled version of whatever the who you are is. Yeah, well, I mean, a, a number of years back, I was running a couple of companies and what we did, what I did every year was do um, obviously the strategic plan, but then try to fit everything on a one pager, which said who we are, uh, what we're, what we're, what we do and what we don't do and mm -hmm. how we do it. Right. So very simple and had that everybody laminated it, had everybody in the organization had that on their desk. And I always said, you know, this is this is the yes, this is what you base everything off of. And if anything falls outside of this, you need to ask your manager what the heck's going on. Right. Um, yeah. But the most important thing is, to your point, is if everybody in the organization isn't singing from the same hymn sheet, then potential customers are getting mixed messages. Maybe they're getting one message from me in sales or marketing and they're getting a different message from customer support or from from implementation. Yeah, ab absolutely. And this, you know, tying it back to, you know, this concept of the prosperous image, mm -hmm. it's these little things that, that when you can figure out how to create them all in alignment, it makes this sort of like seamless transition that gives this customer a sense of belonging. And, you know, that's, that's what we're looking for as the customer or the client to have that belonging that this is where they're meant to be. So when you work with organizations, how do you, how do you ensure that this happens? Tell me your process. So interestingly, a lot of it starts from, it doesn't always do this, but a lot of it always starts from whoever is leading from the top we actually start from their personal brand. Mm -hmm. And I actually believe that the way that you are presenting yourself is sort of this phase one of trickling down this authenticity so that when you're talking, when you're standing in front of somebody, when you're on Zoom, that everything is creating this aligned presence so that when you are talking about an email that has a, you know, this welcome email is not on brand, Mm -hmm. um, that you're able to, to stand in that essence on your own and have it be very clear. And in order to do that, you have to really start with a clear vision and why. And then every piece is run around from there. So once you have your leadership showing up in a way that is aligned with the growth of the brand and what they stand for, then we can actually go in and look at it from the client experience perspective. Mm -hmm. And that's where you start to notice, okay, if we can you know, I'm, I'm, people have probably read um, Joey Coleman's book, like the how to never lose a client. You know, he talks about how within the first 100 days is the most integral piece of not losing a client. And so how do you create an experience that makes that customer really feel like they are in the right place? They are the, every message that they're getting is aligned. And it sort of keeps going around in a wheel, making sure your team is showing up, making sure the mm -hmm. client experience is, is staying on track, making sure any, any, any interactions that the customer has is part of what the brand stands for. And we just create sort of a check and balance system so that they, there are systems that keep it in place. So it's not something that is, you know, oh, I feel like I should do this. I have to keep it like this. Mm -hmm that actually people are excited about it because there's a vision and a why that they're really clear on behind it. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that, one of the things that we did at uh, Pipeliner is we have this concept of the infinity onboarding, right? Where onboarding never finishes. It, it, yeah. it, yeah, you get initially onboarded, but then, you know, we, we work with you and we iterate and we all of this thing. And I think when you have concepts, just like you're talking about there, when you have concepts of things not being not having endings, if you like, you know, that it, it it permeates through the whole organization. Everybody's on brand. It's just like, you know, when you're operating with the customer, there's no point where you're going, oh, there you go, off you go, you're on your own. No, we're here to help you on an ongoing basis. Um, but then, but but to do to effectively do that, you have to have that. You have to have everybody feeling some ownership, right? So you have to have them feel like they own the brand. Too. The brand doesn't belong to the company or just the CEO. It belongs to everybody. Yeah. And I also like to think of it as, you know, 
brand, the word brand, the word image, the word mm -hmm. authenticity, it's not black and white, right? Like sure. it's, it, that's what makes this tricky to create the alignment across the board. But if you can start to think of it almost as a language, it's a language that people speak. You know, each, every company has, you know, things that if you were outside of the company, you're sure. like, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. You know, my husband tells me things that he does and I'm like, I don't know what that acronym stands for. <laughs> Um, so it becomes a language that means something within the organization and does create that sense of belonging. Yeah, that's a really interesting, interesting concept. So uh, how do you how do you how do you achieve that, you know, in, in practical terms, like that everybody has that same language, everybody understands that? Yeah, I mean, the biggest the biggest and fastest way to do it is from story, mm -hmm. which it, you know, may sound funny, but there is there is a story and there is a reason why something became into existence. And when you can get a team on board with the impact and the role that they play in that story that's being delivered to the customer, being delivered to the client, that result, it's a lot easier than just, hey, I need you to do this so that somebody else can do this. No, it's actually really understanding where they stand in this you know trajectory of a result that we want the client to have and how it's an integral piece of it yeah and i think that's a that's a really key point as well as the this the story because i think that's the thing that resonates most with people you know we all um regardless of where you come from the world you know we all come from storytelling traditions and storytelling is what really innately resonates with us and i think that's a great point because i think oftentimes you know people will join an organization but they don't really under they don't really know anything about it they don't really know where it came from what, as you said why it came into being why what was the original like uh what was the original concept or anything like that and i think that's a i think that's a great point you raised because i think you're every people are missing out on a great opportunity there well and i think if we were to ask just you know take a general survey of like tell me brands that you feel a sense of belonging to or you have loyalty to they're typically going to give you a story as to why. Mm -hmm. in, in my first career act, I worked for an equestrian footwear and apparel company. And the most fascinating part of that job to me was if, if there was ever advertised that like, you know, a sales rep was going to be somewhere, I knew no matter what, every time somebody was going to come and tell me the story of the product and of what it was like in their life to have the product. And sometimes people were pissed, but mm -hmm. usually it was somebody coming to tell you how they just couldn't believe that this product had been with them for 23 years and what it had done in their life. And that's all they wanted was to share the story. Mm -hmm. And so I think that if we were to actually pay attention to the brands that we're loyal to, there's some sort of story as to why. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And I think uh, that when you're engaging with customers, we often just sort of say, oh, let's try and get a customer testimonial and it does bang, 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 rather than let's just get a story. Let's get the story of their experience, which I think is a different, it's a slightly nuanced approach. It is. And people remember a story, you know, that you share stories with others. You don't share like statistics. I mean, sometimes, but like, mm -hmm. you know, that's, you're excited to some, tell somebody a story that you heard. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, we had a customer who ran, uh, you know, using our pipeline of CRM, they ran their sales, but they ran a whole um, NFL thing, you know, was, uh, fantasy football, you know, part of their sales and they ran yeah. it through it. And, and I remember that because I thought, wow, that's pretty creative, actually. Yeah. And like, and just, it's interesting. It's different. But, mm. you know, I, and I don't know if that sounds, I, I just think that there's a story within everything. And, mm -hmm. you know, even, even, um, even something that may have started just to, you know, solve a data problem or solve something that may seem like it doesn't have any sort of, any sort of story to it. The end result is creating a story for someone else. It's allowing them to grow their story faster, create something faster. And, and that could be it. Yeah, no, ab absolutely. And just finally, um, Lee, how do you how do you ensure that, you know, as you said, when you work with the leaders, how do you ensure that the leaders continue to present in the best way possible and continue to like represent the brand and represent themselves? So it's reinforced always, both externally and internally. That's a great question. I mean, the process with me is always very intimate. And so, you know, I am typically able to see what people are doing. Mm -hmm. 
But remove me from the equation. It's it's my hope that really what's happened, and I think you said this word earlier, is that by sort of looking at your image as a strategy and not something like, oh, I should show up like mm -hmm. this. You take ownership in a new way because you understand the impact of it. Like amazing things can happen simply from getting dressed. Mm -hmm. And the impact that you have on the people that you are leading, the story that you are a part of, it can be integrally, integrally happen faster simply by the way that you show up. And so that's my true desire for people. It's not mm -hmm. that everybody walks around like, oh, I'm showing up and my image is amazing and we're so prosperous. Mm -hmm is that you really from a like holistic place know that like you are presenting yourself in the best way possible. And that in turn is a making a very cyclical impact. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and not showing up in your pajamas un unless you're a sleepwear company. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, listen, those would also need to be, those would need a strategy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe you have everybody in that company in their pajamas on Zoom calls and whatever. That would be kind of funny. That but anyway, um, listen, Lee, this, this has been fantastic. All of Lee's information will be below this video. But before we go, please tell people a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, so it's been, this has been so much fun. Thank you for having me. And, you know, my hope for sort of me being in the world is that I can em empower, which is another sort of bogus word, but like just help others really stand in the impact and potential that they are here for. And I happen to do that by helping you see the gaps in the way that you are positioned. And sometimes it's just how you are positioned and how you're showing up. And sometimes it's how the whole company is positioned. But it's amazing to me how sometimes a tiny tweak can make a massive difference because what you thought was being presented isn't what is actually being perceived. And when we close that gap, the growth that you desire can happen so much faster. Yeah, fantastic. And by the way, I love the way you, how you put that about, you know, that this is what you believe your purpose in the world is. I think that's fantastic because I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with is kind of finding their purpose. So I think it's always wonderful when somebody can just state their purpose so so eloquently. So thank you for that. And thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Yeah.